Now I'm going to be taking a look at how to repair this Dell monitor. First thing you need to do, make sure it doesn't work, especially if someone else told you what was wrong. After removing the stand, you're going to need to remove the four Visa screws in the back. These are here for two things. One, if you're using a alternate stand than what it comes with. Typically a Visa 100 stand will bolt here, but it also mounts the back of the monitor frame to the chassis inside. Once you get that flipped over, you can use a, uh, a sharp tool, preferably plastic, uh, to go around the edge and remove the face of the monitor. Do keep in mind that you're going to want to push the silver part of the monitor out away from it. Um, the clips on the face just go straight down into it, and so if you kind of push out on a little bit as you go around, it'll help get it out. These face plates are put on pretty tight, so you may need um, something a little bit better than what I had. I have a worn down uh, piece from a cell phone. Do watch out for the control panel. Uh, it's only put on with a little piece of electrical tape. Um, that one came off easier than they normally do. Once you have all this out, this back plate will actually just pop right off. So if you just grab it and gently pull it, uh, the main thing you need to watch out for is the button that releases the stand right here. It's three pieces a black cap, a metal piece, and a spring. You need all of them. There's three screws here in the top that you, if you don't remove them now, you'll find out um, that these are do need to be removed. This is going to allow the actual board that we'll be repairing to fall out. They have heat sink on them, or sorry, thermal compound, uh, so they are a little bit messy. You'll know them. Uh, there's two right next to each other and one a little offset. There are two metal covers, uh, one on each side of uh, the monitor, the top and the bottom, I guess. The top one has three screws, the bottom one has two and is much smaller. Just remove them, pull off the cover. The wires that are protected by these can be difficult to remove in one piece. The plastic is pretty cheap, um, so do be careful. Here's where the five screws are, and the three I mentioned. Okay, uh, my video cut off a little bit. There's a white ribbon cable on top here. It just simply pulls out. There's nothing holding in it. Uh, the ribbon cable on the bottom of the monitor, you need to be particularly careful once you have these four screws out. Uh, there are four screws on the side of the monitor that are holding the chassis for the boards and the circuitry onto the LCD. Once you have these four screws out, there's a very large ribbon cable that has no clips. It's simply put in um, and it's held in by just pressure and it's got a glue or uh, a little bracket that's glued onto a metal piece behind it. Uh, we will just be twisting it off and breaking it loose, but do keep in mind when you pull this thing up that that ribbon cable's there. Slide it back a little bit, and then with a couple of flathead screwdrivers, you can do it with your fingers, um, but with a couple flathead screwdrivers, you can just gently push that thing off. And once it's out, just lift up on the chassis a little bit, and you'll see the black bracket that holds it. Just twist it and I'll break the double-sided tape that's holding it. And then you can just spin this thing around. Keep in mind you do still have a ribbon cable attached on the far corner on this video. Here I just grab a pair of, uh, it's actually wire strippers, but they have a nice plier end on them. And the clips that hold these wires in, there's a, a clip that normally you just push down on your thumb pull it out, but the plastic's real cheap and soft and it can be tricky getting them out without breaking them. Uh, so I like to grab the whole thing at once with a pair of pliers, but if you have some time, uh, you can fiddle with those and get them out whatever best you can. Then just pick it up and twist it. And this will keep the ribbing cable that's on the back side um, attached so we won't have to remove it. From here, you can remove all but one screw. Although if this is the first time you've done this, I sort of recommend removing all of them. However, this is my fifth monitor that 
I've repaired, so I've decided to take a couple of shortcuts at this point. The board closest to you on the video is the one we will be repairing. Uh, so all the screws have to come out on it. All the screws are identical except for one, and I will point that out when we are putting it back together. Or if you're observant, you'll notice that it's the only one that the washer has teeth on it. On the board in the rear, I remove all the screws except for the one in the far back. And the only reason you don't, I don't take it all the way out is because these two cards are attached only by one cable. Right now I'm removing the screws that hold the power plug itself in. It's secured so that when you add and remove the power cord, it doesn't get moved around as much. Then this card just picks right up. There is a bunch of thermal compound on here, so there's a good chance you'll make a big mess. But you can see where I'm taking a very small screwdriver and just pushing out a, it's a rainbow cable. There are all kinds of fun colors on it. You can just work it right out of its plug and then it will slide through where one of the screw posts are and you can just pull the card that we'll be working on free. The reason I wouldn't necessarily recommend this um, if it's your first time is because plugging this thing back in can be a little tricky. Uh, taking it out is not too much of a problem. If you do decide to take it out you will need to remove the final screw and you will also need to um, remove the post that the VGA and DVI cable uh, screw into after you plug it in. Uh, you just turn them uh, with a pair of pliers is usually okay. Here I want to get the board a little closer and show you uh, what we're looking at. I do believe the numbers on the circuit board are C24 uh, and 25, 824, 825, but if you take a look at these resistors on top you'll notice that they are uh, busted. They they have exploded on top and they're leaking a light brown uh, gel type stuff. You can use your solder gun to remove these, heat them up and pull them out. Um, I've noticed these things aren't in such a bad place that I can't just break them off. Um, there's enough room. Do, there is a small resistor on the edge of the board you want to watch out for, but everything else is pretty much either fastened down real tight or out of the way enough to where it's not really a problem to work around. Once you do have them off, uh, regardless of how you get them, make sure you clean out the holes real well with the solder gun, remove any excess wiring or solder that's in the way. Here I'll take the solder gun and I'm just going to clear away some of the debris so that we have a uh, little bit better area to work with. The capacitors um, I ordered are from DigiKey. The price of the actual capacitors for 10 was around 4.95, but then it was about $10 shipping. Um, they're by I think Nichion. Uh, they are 1,000 UF 10 volt capacitors. I have seen where people online have replaced them with larger ones. Uh, to be honest, I am not an electrical engineer, so I'm not going to argue or try to dispute that. But I know that they use 1,000 UF 10 volt radial capacitors um, in the Dell monitor. From what I understand, they just put a cheap brand in it, and that's what caused the problem. So I'm just trying to put a little bit better of a capacitor in here. They are, uh, they do have a polarity. Um, if you look at the capacitors before you break the old ones out, you'll actually notice that there is a gray stripe on the capacitor that's the direction it needs to go back in if you also look at the front of the card you'll notice one half of the circle is brown the other is well yellow just make sure the brown side gets that gray stripe and you should be alright push it in bend the legs uh, just a little bit each way so it holds the capacitor in on its own this is not exactly rocket science, but you don't want it to be messy at the same time. So just bend them over. Don't bend them all the way down towards the board because you do have to cut these off when you're done. Once you feel that you have them in there in a decent shape, lay the board over on something. Normally I have a 2x4. For some strange reason I decided it was a good idea for the sake of this video to grab a one pound roll of solder. 
which clearly worked out really well. If you have not soldered anything before or have not soldered very much, something to keep in mind is that the solder will go towards the heat. So don't put the heat on the leg, put it on the board. Using not necessarily the tip of your solder gun, but a slight edge to it. Uh, I'm leaving it on site. Put it on the um, contact surface of the board right next to the leg. That way it warms up the circuit card and the leg itself. And once it's got up to temperature, all you'll have to do is put a little dab of solder on it and it will melt and stick right to it. I am using silver solder and the r there is flux in it so that's why it's smoking. Uh, flux just helps it to stick a little bit better. This took longer than it should have. I have not cleaned my gun in the process of these five monitors, something it really needs. Actually, I need a whole new tip, but uh, I'm too cheap, so we'll just keep using it until it doesn't work anymore. Try to be... Uh, careful when you've got the the heat on the board there are components that are sensitive to heat so you just want to heat the area you're after once you have them all soldered grab a pair of wire clippers and just snip off the extra legs um, on a typical uh, soldering job you do want to be um, conservative with the amount of solder you put on because some of these boards do come very close to the chassis when you screw them in. However, if you'll notice the way this board goes in, there is plenty of room. So if you put accidentally put a generous bead of solder on the back, uh, as long as it's not touching any other contacts on the board, you should be alright. There's plenty of space in there. Putting it back together uh, is just as easy as taking it apart. This monitor really isn't that complicated. Uh, this ribbon cable is really the worst part if you choose to leave this board in. And thankfully, while filming this video, I ended up having a very difficult time. In fact, I think this video may have been the worst uh, case uh, monitor repair that I've done with this particular model anyway. I couldn't get the faceplate off, I couldn't get screws out, I had the wrong screwdriver, it was just, uh, it was really tedious trying to film this video. Some of it is cut out. Uh, most of it, however, I actually left in so that if you're watching this or doing this for the first time, you can get an idea of some of the frustrations you may have. It is not as smooth as you might think it would be. Once you have that ribbon cable connected, uh, just push it down. Uh, those metal tabs on the sides aren't going to hurt it. Just shove it down into the port. Don't break anything. It's going to lay on at the post. Now here's where you're going to want to find, uh, get your screws with the washers out, but pay attention to the one that has teeth on the washer. It will only go in to one spot. And that is right here where the two boards come together. This post has a larger hole. This one. This is the one where the teeth goes. The other ones don't matter. Um, you may find yourself frustrated if you don't pay attention to that because it will not go into any of the other posts and the other screws will just go straight into that post. They will not, uh, their threads don't even meet. So be sure that you've got that connected appropriately. Get the rest of these screws in. As I make more videos, perhaps I'll get better at editing and I will not have as much boring time in the narration. But at the same time, I, I don't want to cut out parts that may be helpful for you to see, especially over time or if you're doing it while following this video. Now on my first 
monitor that I repaired, I actually hot glued the things that were originally glued down. I hot glued them back together. Um, after evaluating kind of the way this monitor goes together, I realized that it was really kind of unnecessary. Uh, once you get this thing all bolted, like this ribbon cable right here, uh, it's not going to move. I mean, if you drop the monitor, yes, it will probably come out. But if you drop the monitor, you're probably going to be fixing other things too. I put this ribbon cable back in with screwdrivers as well because the tabs on it are so small uh, they just grab it real nice whereas if I use my hands uh, I'm afraid I'm gonna bend the cable don't smash your pink and blue wires with the chassis make sure they're out of the way uh, if you have any doubt as to where the pink and the blue ones go the best rule of thumb is just to realize that these wires are going to have a lay preference. They're going to naturally go to where they were, but the blue ones go to the outside on both top and bottom. So pink wire towards the inside um, and the blue one towards the outside. I like to get these uh, screws with a the thermal compound in back in right away because they're messy and sticky and it gets everywhere and I absolutely hate the thermal compound. So I'm going to get that taken care of as quickly as possible wipe my hands off and be done with it. Get the two pieces of the main pieces of the monitor put back together, screwed in. By the way, if you do put those three screws with the heat sink in, um, those three screws and the screws that go along the edges, the four screws that hold the two pieces together, those are all the same. Um, you're not going to hurt anything by obviously putting the ones with the thermal compound and the ones on the edge in different spots, but I prefer just to put things back uh, where they were. I think these, uh, these screws here on the side, uh, particularly the side with the USB port, uh, the flange doesn't quite line up. I've noticed it on several of mine, so you may run into that. You, they're kind of a pain to put back in. Put that ribbon cable uh, that I just put back in with my left hand. It's uh, got a real stiff um, plastic piece attached to it, so it should just slide right back in. At this point, I forgot to replace the screws that were in the power socket so I'm putting those back in now and they just go into the the rubber itself so don't crank them down too tight now replacing the pink and the blue wires like I said the blue goes on to the outside and the pink goes to the inside now we can put the covers back on The five screws that go into these covers are also all the same. They're shorter, smaller, and have a very small washer on them. And they don't matter where they go. With the smaller plate, it does slightly touch the white ribbon as it runs around. Uh, I typically tuck it under a little bit. Um, there's some adhesive that holds that ribbon cable to the monitor. I just kind of tuck it into that corner. It's right where it turns. Make sure you're not pinching uh, your wires. There is a area that um, flanges up a little bit for those wires to go through. When you're putting this button back together, spring goes in first, the metal piece goes in second, and then the, there's grooves in it where the plastic button uh, goes onto that. When you put the shell back on, make sure you don't disturb that button, but it really does not take much effort to push this thing back on. Just wiggle it over the um, input jacks on the bottom, and then you should be good to go. By the way, if you're nervous about putting all this back together, you can go ahead and test it at this point um, even before you put the shell back on. These buttons uh, only go in one way. 
and it's not the buttons don't directly line up with the buttons on the card so you gotta move it to the left a little bit and you'll hear it snap and then the electric tape will sit nice and flush uh, with the rest of it after that just snap the frame back on uh, the faceplate put these Visa 100 screws back in and we should be done uh, the only thing you want to do is power it on make sure it comes on uh, when you do plug in these Dell monitors uh, they turn on by themselves uh, once you plug in the power they'll say Dell Genesis or whatever and then you'll get the uh, no input message so just because it turns on by itself does not mean you did something wrong that's just how they work um, thing you would want to test is just hit the power button make sure it turns off hit the power button make sure it turns back on and uh, you have just repaired your monitor for a little bit of time